This is Frank Consell with the Crested Butte's Home Podcast. And my guest this week moved to Crested Butte and started to realize just how much she loved trail running and quickly rose to the top of her sport. She got to compete around the world and win races. And she was doing all this while teaching. She tells this crazy story of uh, teaching on a Thursday, jumping on a plane, running a race in China on a Saturday, flying back on a Sunday, and going back to teaching again Monday morning which is just crazy, but that's how we do it here in Crusty Beat sometimes. And uh, she is still racing. She's still running. She's added mom to the list of her titles uh, to go along with her work at the Crusty Butte Community School. And a great interview this week with Stevie Kramer. Today on the Crusty Beat is Home podcast, my guest is Stevie Kramer. So tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from to start off. Hi, Frank. Um, yeah, I'm Stevie and I am originally from, well, I was born in Germany, but then raised in Connecticut. And I moved to Crested Butte right after college in, oh gosh, 2016. Uh, no, yeah, no, what am I talking about? 2006, sorry. Um, <laughs> I wish it was 2016. Um and yeah, I, I got my master's in teaching and then I actually spent a year working for the ski resort. And then after a year of that, I got a job teaching at the school and I taught for about 10 years. And then I just spent my, finished my second year of being the middle school counselor at the same school, the Crested Butte Community School. Okay. So let's, I wanted to go back a little bit. So you're born in Germany. Do you, I mean, were you just an infant when you moved to America or do you remember some of that in Germany or? I mean, my, both, both my parents are German um, uh, and my whole extended family on both sides lives in Germany still. My dad was transferred with a German bank when I was about eight months old. So, I mean, I don't remember much, but we go back, I go back every year and my parents go back more than two or three times a year. So, so you basically though, you grew up in Connecticut. So what was, what was that like? What part of Connecticut and what were you into as a kid growing up? Um, I was raised really in the, uh, very close to New York city. And so I was raised kind of the opposite of the mountains. I, played soccer and golf and tennis and had never run on trails or anything. You know, we, we, I ran on the pavement when I did run and then, yeah, so it was kind of the opposite of Crested Butte, but it was wonderful. And it was right on the water too, where we grew up. Um, so yeah, it was just, it was, it's a completely different life out here for sure. Was there. it uh was it like a city too, or was it a more of a small town far enough away from New York city? Yeah, it was. It's a small town far enough away from New York City. I mean, there's a there's a lot of families whose um, parent or parents work in New York City. So there's a lot of commuters. Okay. There's a train, you know, goes every right. 20 minutes. So right. um, but yeah, it, it's it's more of a smaller town. So you make it out to Colorado to go to college. Where did you go? And why did you why did you end up here in Colorado? I went to Colorado College, which is a small liberal arts school in Colorado Springs. And, you know, I am such a homebody that I really didn't want to go. I mean, I wanted to go to college, but I really didn't want to leave my family, which is really ironic that I say that because I went very far away from my family. But someone had told me about the block program that it offers where you study one class for three weeks and then you move on. And that was very appealing to me. And, and I liked that it was still a small school. So yeah, that's what brought me out to Colorado. And we had spent ski trips. We had gone, you know, a bunch of years. We, we went out to Colorado, never to Crested Butte. Um, but as family, we always had family trips out. So I was familiar with Colorado and I loved it. So yeah, that's kind of what brought me there. And then I met someone that, that had lived in Crested Butte that we, we got our master's together. And she's the one that introduced me to Crested Butte. So we would travel every weekend and um, she had a boyfriend at the time, and I would just be the third wheel. But it was it was great. That's how I got to know Crested Butte. While you were going to CC, you'd come up here like on weekends and things like that. Yeah, my postgraduate year. Colorado okay. College has one um, one postgraduate um, uh, one master's program, the education. So that I stayed for a fifth year to get my master's, and that's okay. when I met my friend. Yeah. Okay. 
Gotcha. So that's how you started to learn about Crested Butte. And then um, after after you were done at CC, you moved up here directly, or was there or was there a stop in between? Nope. I my dad came out in May uh, before I graduated in July, and he kind of fell in love with Crested Butte too. So we brought a, we bought a house, and yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it. So, yeah, that was it. And so that, like a lot of us, you were moved here first and then figure out the job part second, or did you have something lined up at the school already? I believe, that was a long time ago, but I believe that I had something lined up. Um, I, I believe there was something in the works, but I think regardless, my dad would have bought the place. So it's kind of like the chicken or the egg kind of situation. Right. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fair enough. Well, let's just get into what maybe you're known for most, which is running. So you didn't really mention running uh, growing up in Connecticut, but um, when did you start to run? So I was in high school, I joined the indoor track team. I'm, I'm the kind of person that always needs to be doing something. And so in the fall, I played soccer. And then in the spring, I played tennis and golf. And in the winter in Connecticut, there's, I'm, I'm not, I'm five foot nothing. So a basketball is kind of not really a choice for me. And so I just did indoor track for fun. I didn't love it. Um, and then in, in college, I didn't, I ran kind of to fend off the freshman 15, which didn't really work, but I tried. Um, but, you know, I was never a huge runner. And then, yeah, when I moved to Crested Butte, I just, you know, I just started seeing all these mountains and there, are, there really is no pavement in Crested Butte. You know, we have the one highway. And so I would just start, you know, hiking trails. And then I realized, oh, you can run downhill and it goes a little faster. And I just started finding my love for, for running um, on these trails and going up mountains and reaching. Uh, yeah, so I just started finding my love for, for the mountains and, and realizing you can get to the top of peaks way quicker running than walking. Um, and that I didn't care that I did the same trail over and over again. Every time it was something different. For, I don't know, like new flowers popped up or there was something more exciting or a new wildlife was on the trail. So it was just more entertaining for me to run on the trails than it was for me to run on the road. And then I had a friend who kind of motivated me to start signing up for some races and just seeing how it went. And that's kind of how my kind of running started how the career the racing career yeah so what's what um what would be a typical route for you just so the people who are familiar with some of the local trails might have an idea of like what a what type of a run that you're talking about yeah so one i have to say that one of my favorite runs and i'm the kind of person i don't love driving to run and so living in cb south and town for that matter but i, I do live in cb south crested butte south I can run to a lot of trailheads and, and one of my quick go-to, when I say quick, I mean, you know, not epic adventure, um, is the, I, I run from my house up Cement Creek Road and then I run to the Walrod trailhead and then I go up Walrod um, and then take a left onto the trail that connects to the Caves Trail. I always forget the name of that trail. Yeah, that's um, a weird one, but anyway. Yeah, and yeah. then down the caves and then back home and it's, you know, 90% on dirt and trails, which I love and I don't have to drive. And yeah, it's my, it's my go-to run. And if yep. I, if I am in the car and I need a place to go or anything like that, I just, um, I run to the, 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 I mean, I park at the caves trailhead and I run and just do that loop real quick. And it's awesome. Nice. Do you typically run um, only on trails or do you occasionally run off trail too? Because I think that would be fun around here to be able to connect some mountains and just, just run from mountain to mountain off trail. So by myself, I stay on trails. Okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not that adventurous by myself. But if I'm with someone that I trust and I know um, knows routes, I love bouncing from mountain to mountain. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, the Ruby Owen purple. Um, I mean, it's kind of on trail, but there is a little bouncing around. So, yeah. you know, stuff like that I love to do, but I, I love to do that more when I'm with someone that knows what they're doing. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Just in case something happens. Yeah. Eventually you got into racing. So well, let's just hear about, about races and, and your, your career with that. Yeah. So I would say that I started racing. So I moved um, in 2000 at the end of the summer in 2006. So maybe August 
2006. And I, um, I think I waited a couple years before getting into racing. And my first race was actually the cart to cart race in Crested Butte, which I highly recommend. I love that race. And I, they have two, two distances. I think now it's 13 and 18 or 19 miles. At the time it was 11 and 18. And I always just did the shorter one. I always did the 11 one, but that was my first one. And I actually walked half of it. I'll never forget that. <laughs> Um, and that goes from from like Camp Four Coffee in town to Camp Four Coffee in CB South, correct? Yes, the long one, and then the shorter one starts up Brush Creek Road a bit. They drop you off halfway, okay, um, to Brush Creek Road. So um, yeah, I love that, and it's all on trail and dirt road. It's awesome. I started, you know, some people started recommending other other races to me, like the one in Gunnison at Hartman's, which. I think is still happening. The sage burner. Yeah. They moved. It used to be in the spring. Now I believe it's in the fall. And that was a really good one. That was a tough one. So I did that. And then I just started hearing about races around Gunnison County, you know, a little bit outside in Buena Vista. And there was one in Telluride. And so I just started loving the idea of exploring different mountains and trails and having someone make a route for me. Like I said, I'm not very adventurous on my own. So having someone, you know, map something out for me was, was very intriguing. So yeah. And then really my racing took off when in 2012, I moved to Italy, the summer of 2012, August, I went to Italy to teach first grade for a year, just to try something new. And I just started racing internationally. I found races. I had my grandmother's car. She lives in Germany. And we took a, I took a train car uh, or a car train from Germany to Italy with my grandmother's car. And I just drove every weekend. I found a different race around Italy. I went to Switzerland and France and Germany and Austria. I went everywhere and just found a different race every weekend just to explore. And it was very cheap to race. And so that's kind of how my racing took off. And then, yeah, I, I, I huh. went all around Europe to race and, and that turned into all around the world. I, I hit every continent except Antarctica to race. So um, it was pretty awesome, all the experiences I've had. Awesome. So you, that makes sense that you got into it in Europe because the, the sport's a little bit bigger there, right? Like they even call it different names. Like I've heard sky running and they have different names for the, the specific type of running that you do, right? Yeah. So sky running is, is a series, if you will. And y the races have to meet certain criteria, like above a certain altitude, um, a certain distance, a certain steepness, a certain certain te technical route. Um, but so so there was a series. But okay. Europeans love mountain and trail running, and um, it's huge. It's huge over in Europe, and it's getting huge in Asia as well. So yeah, I mean, th th there's a big scene, and and there some of the races I did had people lining the mountains from start to finish. It was incredible. Some of the spectators I saw for sure. Kind of like like for people who watch the Tour de France, it was like that, just a row of people and you're just running in between them. Oh, yeah. And they like push you up the hill. But I mean, we're talking, they get up at three, four in the morning to make it to certain areas of the race so that they can cheer on. It's it's crazy, the spectators in a lot of the places in Europe, for sure. It was, oh, it was really an cool. amazing scene. That's really cool. What do you think were some of your most memorable events or favorite events or favorite stories? I, so when, like I said, I moved in 2012 and I was actually invited to a race in Switzerland in early August before, you know, my, my, my school started end of August or early September in Italy and the August, you know, prior I was invited to race in Switzerland and it was my first international race. I had no idea what I was doing. And so, you know, that was just a cool experience because it was a race that had people from literally all around the world. And, and there's a chunk of athletes that get invited and they were all, you know, head to toe in sponsored gear. And I was in my, you know, regular clothes, just, I mean, and it was great because there was no pressure because no one, not that people know me now, but you know, like I was this random or by myself there no other americans were there so it was just it was a great scene to be part of because i didn't have the pressure and then i ended up doing okay and i had to get uh drug tested and i never in a million years would have thought i'd be in switzerland doing decent in a race and having to get drug tested 
and I got drug tested and it took so long that I actually missed my flight because I was visiting my family in Germany. I missed my flight from Germany, from Switzerland to Germany because I wasn't allowed to leave until I provided yeah. a sample. And it was just, you know, I, and, and I was taught, my parents actually came to the race, which was really cool. And I, I couldn't, I had a wave to them from a window because I was not allowed to leave this little yep. cabin until I, you know, so that, that's something I'll never forget. My, my big first international race. Um, and then in September, I actually did a race in Switzerland and I had a horrible journey to get there. And the race ended up being the, the world championship of long distance running. And I went in there just not feeling good. And I ended up winning that race and just, it was, it was just such a cool experience to, again, go in with no expectations and then end in a place that you never would have imagined. And it was just such a cool scene. And so those are the, those are the things I'll never forget, for sure. Awesome. What was it like being, I mean, as we discussed before, it's, it's definitely a, it's a little bit of a Eurocentric sport. So what was it like being like this American kind of <laughs> jumping in on the scene or whatever? Well, to be perfectly honest, my heart is is in Germany. I, I like sure. when I go to Europe because I, we, you know, I go all the time, not only for racing, but to visit my family. So I feel not to sound so cheesy, but I really feel at home there. I mm -hmm. understand German, you know, I, I can speak German. I understand Spanish. And so, so I, I love it. I love it. I feel at home when I go there for sure. Yeah. But it's also fun being an outsider and every trail running People are very friendly in the, in the sport of trail running. I think they're very welcoming and very, yeah, I, I think it's one sport where, you know, people are welcoming and, and they don't care where you're from. And it, in fact, they're interested in where you're from and they want to hear about it. And so I, I loved, I loved it. And, you know, being that my name is Stevie, those first few international races, people thought I was a boy. Um, <laughs> and, you know, that one race I was telling you about in, in Switzerland, the, the second one where it was the world mountain running champions, championship they only had females go that day because it was because one day it was girls one day it was men and the day that it was the females was the first day and when they said stevie kramer they thought i was a boy so they didn't even think i was in the running for this you know for, for the title so it was really it was really funny because my dad actually came to that race too and he heard how they, you know, at all the different aid stations, they were like, who's this guy running? So, you know, <laughs> it's kind day. of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. What do you think was your like biggest strength? Was it like uphill, downhill? What, what was your, what was your thing? 100% uphill running. I, I don't know if it's because the trails in Crested Butte, a lot of them are very steep or I just, when I first moved to Crested Butte, I tried to climb a lot of mountains. And so I don't know if that helped, but definitely uphill is my strength. And yeah. I'm kind of a chicken on the downhill, but I do my best. In the Crest Butte Real Estate Minute, this episode is coming out a little bit late because I've been busy. Everyone I've been trying to interview has been busy and real estate's been busy and it's been busy on Elk Avenue as far as I can tell. Despite COVID um, and the coronavirus here in July of 2020, uh, as far as real estate, we still have high demand. We have the low interest rates, which were around three percent pretty recently, and that has all meant that we are quite busy. What we really need is more inventory in many different areas around the valley and many different price points. So, if you are a property owner considering selling, give me a call because there just isn't much available. It's a great time to sell. My name is Frank Cancella. My number is 970-596-7990. And my website is crestybutrealestateagent.com. And let's get back to the interview. Well, let's switch it up a little bit, but you kind of took this running thing and then, and then put skis on and did something pretty similar. You know, there's a lot of names for it. Ski mountaineering, schemo, rando racing, whatever. So what, was that just something to do in the winter? Or was there more to it than that? Um, that was definitely something to do in the winter. I mean, even though I still run in the winter and I'll put crampons on and run up Crested Butte Mountain, I, I definitely wanted something different. I didn't want to get burned out from running. And then I started noticing people going uphill with skis on and that 
intrigued me. And I actually had telemark skis at the time. And so I, I put skins on them and I noticed everyone just flying by me. And so then I went to the Alpineers Father's Day sale and got my gear at 50% off in the middle of June. But then the next winter, I had these light skis, light boots, and I just loved it. And the best part is when you get to the top, you get to ski down. So it was like, you know, the best reward for your hard work. So that's kind of how I got into that as well. Why did, you choose, be, why did you choose that versus uh, Nordic racing or Nordic skiing, just out of curiosity? I think because of the uphill. Yeah. I love going uphill. Gotcha. I never even gave Nordic skiing a, a chance. The only time I ever Nordic skied was for the Grand Traverse. I did that three years on Nordic skis and never again. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. What's your favorite at this point? Do you prefer the, the, the skiing or the running? Honestly, I think because of the simplicity of it, I love running. I, right. you know, you can do it anywhere, anytime, all you need are shoes. And I, I love that. You, you really yeah. can't have a malfunction with gear yeah. when it comes to running and, and you can do it anywhere. So I love that about running. But as soon as that first snow flies, I'm ready to put on skis. And then as soon as the mud starts coming, I'm ready to start running more frequently. So the seasons are perfect in Crested Butte when it comes to running and skiing. But I think if I had to choose one, simply for the simplicity of it, I would choose trail running. Well, some of these races we've been talking about there a little bit in the past. Do you still compete or when was your last, when was your last race if you no longer do compete? So I, um, I had a baby in March of 2018. And that summer I went to Europe and did some races in Europe. Um, my parents met me and they watched him as I raced. Um, and then last summer, for work reasons and, and other things, I wasn't able to travel to Europe, but I did a lot more local races. It was just easier to get childcare there. Mm -hmm. um, I would go to races where I knew people and they knew babysitters. So the babysitters would meet me at the race, watch my son for, you know, one or two or three hours at the race headquarters and then I you know I would have him again and then this summer I was lined up to to race a bunch in Europe and and um and here in Colorado and in the United States but everything got canceled so right. I have not raced um right yeah and are I was you missing that competitive the thing or are you I mean, I, I guess they've done a few virtual races. Like uh, I, I interviewed um, Derek about some of the stuff that he's doing with, with TerraQuest and they have these virtual races. Have you, are any of those going on that you could do just to knock one or two out or is it just kind of done for uh, this year? Honestly, I have not gotten my groove into virtual racing. I don't really even understand how they work. Um, <laughs> you know, part of the reason I like to race is, is the camaraderie and the right. scene. Um, I get really, really nervous for races, no matter how small or big. I get so nervous, but I love the post-race, and I love exploring new trails and mountains and um, meeting people along the way. And, you know, that's my draw to racing. So right. the virtual, um, I just, I haven't yeah. been, I haven't done any of them, to be honest with sure. you. That's yeah, so that, that's what I miss about the, the, that's what I miss about competitions. I miss the people, and I miss the whole scene. Um, right. Right. And well, and I'm sure it's just like, there's like a traveling tribe of you basically. And you see each other at all the events and yeah, ask each other how they've been since the last time you saw them and all that stuff. So yeah, totally. Exactly. Well, on top of all this, you're also a school teacher, as you mentioned, um, or a counselor, I guess now, but so talk about, um, talk about Crest Butte Community School and how that worked with your running and teaching at the same time. Um, I have to say that the community school has been incredible to me. Like I said, I've been there pretty much since 2006 with a year or two in between with me going through a couple of quarter and midlife crises, but yeah, they have been awesome. And when I first came back from Europe in 2013, my principal at the time offered to let me take a year leave of absence to pursue my racing just, you know, because she knew that I was doing all these cool things and she was really supportive. And I didn't take it, but I would leave and go to, I would literally leave on a Thursday. I would do a half day of teaching on Thursday, get on a flight Thursday night to China, get there Friday, race Saturday and be home Sunday and then teach Monday. <laughs> and it was crazy. Like I did that a bunch of times to Europe and I always had the support of the school behind me. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, when it comes to running or, or, or training, you know, whatever you call it, I just, I'm an early riser. So I love waking up early and going for a run. And a lot of times I'll meet some friends and depending on the, the day, the, the light situation, I may or may not go on trails, but I'll go on, you know, the dirt road roads with friends before work. And then after school, I try to go on trails, even if it's just for half an hour or something yeah. um, just to get out. Yeah. How are those races working as far as jet lag and stuff? I, I would personally not really be able to get off a plane and go do something super athletic like that. How did you just get used to it? And you just have a skill? I honestly think it's that I didn't have enough time to get jet lagged. I would literally arrive at 9 PM in China and race at 6 AM the next morning. And I feel like you, you get off the plane and you just pass out. You're so tired that you sleep actually really well. And I think it hits you the second day. So I think that second night after the race, not only am I tired from the race, but I'm tired from sleeping so or not sleeping. So, right. And I think adrenaline does crazy things <laughs> to your body. And, and, you know, when you're in that race scene, and I think that you can, your body can do a lot more than you realize. And the first couple times, I, I mean, it all started because I realized I couldn't miss that much school for these races. Um, I couldn't leave on a Monday just to, you know, get to Europe and, and get adjusted to jet lag, you know, two or three days. And so I just tried it once. I said, okay, well, I can go to this race, but I'm not getting there until the day before. And that first, the first couple of times I did it, I had panic. I, you know, I thought, what am I doing? This is so stupid. But I realized I was doing it and I might have lost 20 years off my life doing it in, in the long run. But <laughs> At the time, it, it worked out okay, and, and I didn't miss school. I, you know, I was able to not miss a lot of my friends, so it was kind of nice the way it all worked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Well, you also mentioned, um, mentioned uh, being a mom, so how do you, now you're balancing work and motherhood and running. How, were you, how, how has that worked out for you? I have put a lot of miles on my Thule stroller. He, my son, Hans, he comes with me every time weekends I run and after work that I run. Um, and he has learned to love it. And we learn about wildlife. We learn about flowers. We talk. Um, it might not be the most quality running I'll have, but um, it's great. I love being with him. And yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't get out on trails as much because of it. Sure. But I'm okay with that. And um, your, your priorities shift as, you, as your life changes and, and things happen. And so, you know, he's my priority. And the fact that I can still run with him and in the winter I pull him when I ski, it's great. We can do it together. And I think he enjoys it. And, you know, that's not to say that sometimes he won't, you know, someone won't watch him as I run on a trail here and there. It, it still happens, but sure. It, it works out the way it does. And like I said, I have an old rusty treadmill that doesn't really incline. And that's my before school run when, you know, when he's still sleeping, I can do that, which is nice that I can still get some, some running in for sure. It's, it's quiet enough to not wake him up. That's good. Yes. Yes. That's good. Um, well, another question about school, um, we're recording this in summer of 2020 and school is hopefully going to start up pretty soon here, but I'm just curious, uh, any thoughts you have with, with going back to school and what parents are dealing with, with the with COVID and everything else? Um, you know, our district is doing a really good job of having the staff and the students, you know, as the most important priority and um, they're following guidelines. And I think right now, you know, it's looking like we can go back to school safely and um, they're giving kids and parents the option of doing a, a fully online program if they, if they don't feel comfortable going back to school. But, you know, the school is doing everything they can to keep, keep kids healthy and, and safe and family safe. And I trust that the school knows what they're doing. So I'm feeling confident in, in whatever decision they make. And, and, you know, it's just important that not only are they physically safe, but also that emotionally they're feeling okay to return to school or, or that, you know, they're, they're socially, emotionally, they're doing okay back in the school setting or at home or wherever it may be. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, the whole other part with the whole thing is, is, uh, yeah, socializing and, and also just adjusting to, to all this crazy stuff that's going on. It's gotta be, gotta be tough for, for different age groups it hits them yeah, differently. For sure. So, well, um, Ooh, one last 
totally oddball question I wanted to ask. Um, I don't even know you that well, but you always have the same pair of earrings on. Is there a story with the earrings? Um, you know, my grandmother who lives in Germany, she has, I think since I was born, given me pearls for my birthday or for Christmas. And I I don't know. It's funny because I never really used to wear earrings. And then I don't know even what, know when I started wearing them. And now I just realized I have really big earlobes. So instead of showing the earlobes, I put pearls in them. And now they're my, I don't know if I'd call them, good luck charms or, but they're just like part of me now. And, yeah. um, and maybe it's just that I really hate my ears. And so I, I like <laughs> no. to put something in them. I don't know, but yeah, they're, they're just my, my grand, my sister wears them too. My mom wears them too. It's kind of just our, our thing. And yeah, I love nice. them. <laughs> so it's almost a family thing. I like it. Yeah, cool. for sure. Uh, we'll start to wrap it up a little bit. So Crested Butte is home for you. So why, why Crested Butte? I love the small town. I have created a, a great group of friends that um, are incredible. Um, I can I can be myself in Crested Butte. I I don't feel like there's any pressure, any you know city pressure to be someone that you're not. Not that that's always the case, but for me, I just you know even in Connecticut it can be hard. And and Crested Butte, I love that you know you don't always have to dress up, but you can dress up if you want. I love the trails. I love that, you know, your Saturday isn't shopping, but it's going up a mountain. Um, I love that kids learn to pee outside and um, that's okay some places. Um, yeah, I just, I think, and I, and I love having a P.O. box and I love that you just know everyone when you walk down Elk Avenue and it's just a place that I, everyone's so kind, I think. And, and um, yeah, it's just a good place to raise kids too. Awesome. Um, well, if someone wanted to learn more about you and your racing history, is there a website or anything that they can go to or social media? Um, you know, I really just have an Instagram page. Okay. That's Evie Kramer. I don't have a website or anything like that, but I okay. do post on Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. Um, anything else I should have asked that you just feel like talking about? I think you got it all. That's my life right there. All of it wrapped yeah. up into half an hour. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, last question then, who else should I interview? You know, I've been thinking about this and someone else that has a really interesting life is Yari Hyatt. Do you know who Yari is? Yeah, I know her a little bit. Yeah. And what I think is interesting is she's had a really interesting competitive career. Um, in terms of adventure racing all over the world and bike racing. Um, I'm assuming you, you mean like athletes that you want to. No, I actually, I, I probably, I, I've been trying to get more like artists and, and, and other things that are around here too, but um, oh, okay. I definitely like have fallen into, uh, into interviewing a lot of athletes. Just because. Okay. Well, that, <laughs> sorry, that's kind of, because she now has a son and so she's kind of, um, you know, showing everything she knows about Crested Butte to her son, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for uh, hanging out with me this morning and um, see you when you get back into town shortly, I guess. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Thanks for listening to the Crested Butte is Home podcast with me, Frank Consella. Please subscribe on your favorite podcast player or visit com, and you can check out all the episodes there as well as real estate information. As always, please leave a review and share the show with your friends if you like it. I really appreciate that a lot and I will be back with you soon with another episode.